all in all, in my 20 years, I've owned and operated 11 stores. I'm currently down to four stores in New Jersey. Okay, so you just opened a can of worms, so. <laughs> so all of my smaller stores I ended up selling and you hit a ceiling very quickly. A very good friend of mine, business partner and mentor told me something a very long time ago. He says, when you have an investment that's maximized, get rid of it. We're in your store here in Patterson. How yes. big is the store? The total space of the store is about 11,000 square feet. <laughs> Just the area we're filming in is roughly the size of my dad's first <laughs> store. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> So right away, I'm going to assume stores fully attended. Always, okay. yes. At all your stores, they're all fully, fully yes. attended? I got so many more questions now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is great. People recognize when somebody's in it just for the buck, right? You get the same reaction from your customers, where basically what they're going to say is, well, then, okay, you don't care about us, we don't care about you. Serving in community, obviously, you know, there's there's so much benefit to it. I live by this model, which is we rise by lifting others. And it's true. When you help the people around you rise, you yourself will rise as well. So, Allah, why laundromats? Um, it's, a, it's an interesting story, actually. The, the, I was, I'm going to say that it was more of a right place, right time. Okay. Uh, about 20 years ago, my dad actually was um, really looking to get into the business. I was 22 years at the time. I was, you know, just out of college. Never in my life would have thought I would ever open up a laundromat. I definitely had the entrepreneurship, you know, feel, and I knew I wanted to, you know, own my own business, but just never even on my radar. And my dad was uh, in partner with someone and the person he was in partner with kind of got cold feet at the end. Okay. Um, and so he backed out and unfortunately my dad's credit at the time wasn't good enough to kind of, you know, to allow him to do the financing for the machines and stuff. So he approached me, he said, hey, look, my partner backed out. So I need here. somebody to, <laughs> you know, come in with me because I need to get financing for these machines. You have good credit, would you do it? And I was like, okay, sure, why not? And that was it. That's yeah. from there, and that was it. <laughs> I, you know, I laughed so hard because we talked prior, and our, our paths in laundry are so similar, and then the stories with our dads in the business, and my, mine is the same way. My dad got into the business by accident. That's right, yeah, I remember you And then me. I got tied into it. So when you say that, it's just like, eh, I had no, like, all right, like, I'm going to be in laundry. And yeah. Like, <laughs> look at all this time has passed, and now, like, we're, we're sitting here talking about laundromats, so it's awesome. So you, you got into it by accident, not accident, but ha happenstance right. with dad. And I'm, I always screw this number up. And today you've gone from the one lunch bag with your dad up into one point, like seven, eight stores, I think you were telling me. All, all in all, in my 20 years, I've owned and operated um, 11 stores. Okay. I'm currently down to four stores. Um, in New Jersey. Okay, so you just opened a can of worms. So <laughs> 11 at your peak, like in this day and age, you all, we always hear in the forums, people talking like they want to get more and more multi-store operators. Right. What was the, the mindset or the situation that you said, I'm at my peak at 11 and you say, you know what, I'm going to start selling off some of these bad boys. Um, look, I think, I think in any business, um, success really comes with being able to be 10 steps ahead, okay. um, you know, looking at different signs, seeing the writing on the wall. And what I decided about four or five years ago was that the industry was taking a shift and small stores with no on-site parking were gonna be a thing of the past. Um, so what I decided was I was gonna take all of my stores that were under 6,000 square feet, did not have any on-site private parking and sell them. Okay. Um, and focus on bigger stores, 6,000 square feet and above, uh, with large parking facilities that are private to the laundromats. Um, and that was it, and that's, and that's what I did. So all of my smaller stores I ended up selling. And the other thing too with the smaller stores that don't have parking is you hit a ceiling very quickly. Right. Uh, you get to a point where 
you just can't do more. And you know, um, a very good friend of mine, business partner and mentor told me something a very long time ago. He says, when you have an investment that's maximized, get rid of it. Um, you know, once you realize that there is, you reach that ceiling and you can't grow it anymore, mm -hmm. then there's nothing left to do, but to just get rid of it. And you know, so that was the advice that I took and, uh, offloaded all, all of my smaller stores that I feel were pretty much at their capacity. Right. So that's, that's, I want, I don't want to say interesting philosophy, but it makes sense. Cause when I think about it, well, we're in Brooklyn, right. right? And parking is like street. It's only on street. Parking. Oh yeah. And one of the conversation pieces I have with store owners is, or operators, when we talk about getting more self-service business in the city, I'm counting the number of blocks somebody's willing to walk. And that's the majority of my clientele, yep. not thinking like, who's willing to drive like 15, 20 city blocks to come because there's no parking. Like everything is on street, so they either double park in front of our store, yep. unload it, run inside, throw the bag down, and then go hunt for a parking spot for like the next 10, 15 minutes. 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. It's a Saturday <laughs> or a Sunday, or maybe alternate side street, the parking is already <laughs> over. That's a whole nother deal. So the, the methodology of only looking for large, using the large footprint that has on-site parking, how, in your opinion, your experience, having that on-site parking, how, how big you think of a radius are you capturing now with people driving to the store? So two things with that. So I actually, from my 11 stores, one of them was in Manhattan. It was on 162nd Street and St. Nicholas Avenue. I know exactly what No is. parking. Um, <laughs> I, I sold it to who is now a very good friend of mine, Angel Freyas, and he still owns the store and loves it. He managed it with his dad, had a very similar story to me. His dad's story is um, awesome. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was the same thing for us. We were doing great business there, no parking. So obviously every geographic location is different and right. some some areas parking is not an issue and you don't really need it and obviously new york the boroughs are definitely fall into that um but to go back to your question as far as a radius here in jersey it's different you know people you know don't necessarily uh, walk to places like in new york right. everybody's driving everywhere but surprisingly in a lot of my stores I have people who literally will come up to me and tell me I come from about three towns over. I pass five laundromats to come here. Um, so you'll be surprised. And even when I advertise, I expand my radius because in Jersey, the way I look at it is you've taken your laundry and you've put it in your car. Right. You've already done the hard work. What's the big deal if you're going to drive an extra five minutes to go to a laundromat that you really like to go to because it's spacious and clean and has good machines? Right. So here in Jersey, I tend to advertise on a larger radius. But yes, in New York and the boroughs, you're really going to focus on a very small radius because the majority of the people are walking okay. and nobody wants to lug around 40 pounds of clothes. Right. 10 city blocks so <laughs> yeah in new york city we're putting it in a shopping cart and we're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe three, maybe I, I have some people tell me they go like five blocks and i'm like yeah five hey, i think your five yeah. blocks like here have some free beverage or something on us that's, a, that's and then a, you have the six floors without an elevator that you're you know so they're like once i get down those stairs i'm not trying to walk <laughs> that much more so i get it <laughs> great so you you mentioned that, that when you do your advertising and reach to it, what methods of advertising do you, you currently use and which ones you see are most effective? Um, so recently we've seen a lot of great feedback on Google. Okay. Um, Google oh, ads or like just the Google, Google business? Ads. Okay. So Google ads, but also obviously, um, this is a pet peeve of mine too. I absolutely hate when business owners don't have the accurate information on their Google profile. If Amen. If, if your hours are not correct, you know, look, holidays, take the extra 30 minutes, right. update the holiday schedule. If you're going to open, if you're going to close early, late, just update it. If you have updates, if you have promotions, put it on your profile. If you have anything that you need to change or modify, make sure your Google profile is up to date. That's yeah. number one. And you can do it as far in advance as you want. And it's now like I do the majority of it on my phone. So if I'm if I'm in an Uber going somewhere, if I'm in a train or if I'm, I'm just taking on my phone and I'm updating my profiles, it doesn't have to be a whole dedicated day. Exactly. But it has to be updated because right. the last thing I want is a customer on Christmas Eve to drive all the way to my laundromat <laughs> after they put their clothes in the car just to find out that we closed early for Christmas Eve and then they're mad and probably will never come back to me again. Right. Um, and, and 
I was going to say and leave a one star review, but and leave a one star review. The one star review yeah. is probably the best case scenario. The worst is, like you said, they never come exactly. back again. So yeah, Google Ads is great, but obviously I use all of the other um, streams as well. So um, social media, Instagram is a big one um, mm -hmm. that I like to to post on. But word of mouth really is uh, is a big is a big thing for me. Huge. It's, it's huge. I, I like I said, I'm I'm here. I try to be as present as possible in the laundromats, and I talk to customers, and I I see them. You know, especially when we open up a new place, I see them taking out their phone and mm -hmm. you got to come over here and check this out. You know, this is <laughs> this is unbelievable. And I, I love to see that. And that's what I want. Word right. of mouth, as you know, in any business it's is fun. the best form of advertising. Yeah, so I rely so on that a lot. Course. Great. So four locations, they all have parking. You use a similar advertisement for all of them. Um, how are you tracking it to know if it what's working and what's not? Like, that's such a huge conversation. Yeah, yeah. It's like... <laughs> And, and maybe you aren't. You're still experimenting with it. it. It's always a question that I hear. Listen, I'm still working to figure it out. We're playing and experimenting with some things to say what works best. Because yeah. you and I both know someone, unless you're giving away some kind of like promotion or coupon for them to come in and you can actually say, okay, they saw this thing here and then they redeemed it. It's always a, a challenge to figure out. The person saw it somewhere and then it led them to come here versus like pick up and delivery. They can click on it. Of and kind of. Yeah. I mean, the tracking, as you said, is difficult. We right. obviously rely on the analytics that's provided by the tool. So okay. how many clicks, how many, which doesn't necessarily translate into business, into actual, you know, people coming in. So it gives us an idea. Um, and so what we typically do is I try to not introduce too many variables. And what I mean by that is. Mm. I separate them. So if mm -hmm. I'm going to do a Google ads, I'm only going to do a Google ads for that month. I'm not, I'm going to stop everything else and then I'm going to gauge it and see, okay, so when I ran my Google ads, I uh, saw a 5% increase in business for that month. And then right. the next month I'll do maybe an Instagram ad or the next month after that, I'll pass flyers around or I'll do a promotional event at my location. That makes so sense. separate what you're doing. So this way you can have some data that's more specific to what you did at that time. Got it. So. We're in your store here in Patterson. How yes. big is this store? This store, um, the, the total space of the store is about 11,000 square feet. Where we're sitting here is about 2,000 square feet, which is pretty much empty space. So the store itself is about 9,000 square so feet. So just the space we're filming in, just so we're clear <laughs> here, right? This is the total flex move at a laundry. <laughs> we're just filming in 2,000 square feet. And you said the rest of the store is how much again? 9,000 square feet. 9,000 square feet. It was like, a, you told me it was a supermarket here. It previously. used to be a supermarket. Right. Where we're sitting used to be an empanadas uh, restaurant. So the supermarket was behind us and then they kind of blocked us off and just had like empanadas and stuff in the, in the front here. Yeah, so 11 thousand square feet yes um, <laughs> just the area we're filming in is roughly the size of my my dad's first <laughs> store so it's unbelievable but i say that to say um i'm sitting here i'm looking at, at your shirt and i see the bubbles r us um logo all your first of all all your stores have the same name yes 100 percent and you, you know, there's always conversation about some owners have multiple stores, different names, and then some as yourself have the same name. What is your, what was your thought pattern and reasoning behind making them all the same name? There is brand recognition is mm -hmm. one of the best tools in any business. For me, I want to build a brand and I want to have an association with my brand. And the, you know, for us, it's, you know, the, our motto is more than just clean clothes because that's what we want. We, right. we serve our community. We provide a nice, safe, clean space where people could come and not just wash clothes, but be in air conditioning, you know, in the hot summer days and feel comfortable right. vending machines and, you know, TVs and just just provide a, a, a haven for people to just kind of come and just relax and, and enjoy themselves. Right. You mentioned before when we were speaking some of the different things you've done. Um, in the community, you mentioned how you had the, I'm, I'm so, hopefully I get this right. It was dinner like under the, the stars. Breakfast under the breakfast stars. Breakfast under the stars for, for Ramadan. Yes. How has your community involvement with the business impacted? And I'm gonna be totally, you know, business here. How has it impacted your numbers? Um, it's, uh, it, you know, where I think it really impacts a lot is mm -hmm customer retention and loyalty. Okay. Um, you know, people recognize when somebody's in it just for the buck, right? 
mm. want to come in, they want to squeeze as much money out of their business as possible, and they don't care about the community. And what ends up happening there is you get the same reaction from your customers, where basically what they're going to say is, well, then, okay, you don't care about us, we don't care about you. Right. We're going to come in here because you're what's hot right now. But as soon as somebody opens down the block and they're offering something better, mm -hmm. we don't have any loyalty to you. And right. so I think, you know, serving in community, obviously, you know, there's there's so much benefit to it. Um, it's it's a personal thing of mine. I, you know, I think it's, it's a must um, in life. I think we always have to help people um, in anything we do. Um, I, I, I live by this motto, which is we rise by lifting others. And it's true. You know, when you, when you help the people around you rise, you, you yourself will rise as well. Right. But when you talk about it from a business perspective, yeah, the loyalty that it builds and the customer retention is, is, is there. It's, it's, and it's priceless. It is. Okay. So that's important, but it's time for us to geek out yeah, over, yes. over some <laughs> over machines. So here I, I look over our shoulder. You have Electrolux here. Yes. You have the Electrolux throughout all four of your stores no, now? No, this is actually my first store with Electrolux. Oh, wow, this is about to get really good now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what do you have in the other stores? Um, all my other stores are Speed Queen. Okay. By Alliance. I won't tell Speed Queen. <laughs> Hopefully they're not watching. Um, okay, so you got Speed Queen in the other four, and then you put Electrolux here. Yes. And then here I noticed you got cards, and then you have Electrolux. Is it like pay? I think it's called pay. I can't remember the it's name. A, of that. So here we have coins, not okay. cards. So we have I said cards. Yeah, I coins, mean, coins. Coin. coins and laundry pay. Okay, laundry pay. Yes. So you said then two forms of payment here. What about at your other three? Two forms of payment, but I, I have pay range in my other three. So I have coins and pay range in my other three. Okay, so y you're almost as bad as me. You, you just like <laughs> making it complicated. <laughs> so what made you want to say, I'm not, you got Speed Queen at three stores. Well, let me back up. At your height, you had 11. Yes. Did you have the same machines in all 11? Always. Were they all ground up bills only one was not damn you're a glutton for passion, <laughs> my man. you know what it, what it is while is that um i i'm very particular about and we were just talking about this flow and how the store works and i'm a perfectionist okay and i'm the kind of person that I when i walk in <laughs> <laughs> when i walk in if i see something that's not right it drives me crazy and i always knew if i buy a store that's already built I'm probably going to end up tearing it down and rebuilding it anyway. Yeah. So my, my <laughs> thought was always, you know what? I just want to get it the way I want it mm -hmm. from the beginning. And, uh, and, and that's a valuable lesson I learned. It costs a lot more money to redevelop a store that's existing versus Greenfield coming in and do it your own way. Right. So that's why I've always just done um, stores from the ground up. Okay. I want you to tell that to my partner later because we <laughs> always have this discussion about the stores. <laughs> Um, but that's interesting. I didn't know all of them except for one were pretty much ground up. Yep. I'd say ground up, but just a, a new build. And were they existing stores or were they like this, where it was something else and you came in and just made it a laundry There was a mix. There was, I would say out of the 11, there was about three that were existing. And okay. then the other ones were all just locations that were not laundromats. Did you, in that, did you ever notice is, did you have any data or notice the ones that were existing versus the new ones, which ones t seem to perform best? Believe it or not, the new ones. Yeah. The new ones always perform better. Um, I don't know if it was because you're dealing with what the old operator did and it was kind of That's harder. what I was kind of going to ask you, um, yeah. But yeah, no, the, the, the newer ones always perform better. Yeah, I, I, I attribute it probably to, you said something earlier and I forget exactly how you said it, but that whole human thing, we see something new, it's shiny and yes. it draws us in. And then how do we keep them once they come in? Exactly, yeah. Okay. That's awesome. All right, so now my head is all over the place. So we got four <laughs> stores now. This one is Electrolux, the rest is Speed Queen. You've got coin and everything, yes. but then you have different electronic. Yes. So what led you to say, now I'm gonna try Electrolux versus? Um, it was it was uh, it was a couple of things, but you know one of the things that I did here before when I when this location was presented to me was obviously I wanted to see well what does the competition look like right. and I wanted to offer something different. Okay. Um, a lot of the people um, here that have laundromats offer Hipsh or Speed Queen, 
um, which is all Alliance based, Ipsol, which is very similar machines. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted okay. to offer, you know, the people here something. So this way I could stand out. This way I could be compared. And that's, and I love competition because competition <laughs> is something that will either prove that you are better than the competition mm -hmm. or you got to get better. Right. But either way, it keeps you on your toes. And, sure. and it allows you the opportunity to introduce something new. Um, and so that was a big driver for mm -hmm. me with Electrolux was nobody had it. Um, these are the 450G machines, right. which um, soft mount, which, you know, again, very, very seldom do you find those um, in laundromats nowadays. Absolutely. Um, so that was a big driver for me there. Right. So when we were coming first, and here we go with another flex. A lot has two parking lots at this store. Yeah. <laughs> so when we first came, I was going to park here, but then I, I was going to park. I parked and pulled up in the rear, but I was like, it'd probably be easy to unload if we park here. So I drove around and I noticed there's a laundromat, like, I don't know, six blocks up that way. Yep. Yeah. So or um, maybe it's this way. Street, which is Park Avenue. Yes. Um, yes. And were, were you, were they here before you? They or? were here before us. Yes. Okay. Uh, They've been here for quite some time. And did you see your store being different? Obviously, you don't know what their business is, but I'm sure you've gotten some clientele and it's always vice versa that has come sure. in and probably spoke to you about their store compared. So you taking that different mentality with the soft mounts, with the high extraction. Have you heard feedback from people about that difference being a positive thing for you? Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's been very positive. And look, mm -hmm. you know, um, Everybody does things differently, and they, 100%. like you said, they they ha they are very strong in certain aspects of the business. Right. Um, I'm stronger in, in other aspects, but um, you know, I think at the end of it, anybody could build a store. Okay. Right? Anybody could build a great store that looks great, and their store looks amazing. It's an amazing store, and um, I I think what it comes down to is really the experience, the customer okay. service, the experience. And that's where I hear a lot of positive feedback. You know, we right. love the customer service here. The, the staff is very friendly. Um, the environment feels good here. So that's, you know, we're sitting behind the plants and I, I always have plants in all of my stores because plants do something for me. I, when I'm sitting in a room with plants, I feel more relaxed. I feel like I'm more at ease and I want the customers to feel the same way. So that's where I get a lot of the positive feedback is the environment and the customer service. That's awesome. I, you know, I love the plants. Wrote about an issue I, of Wash Weekly. <laughs> like when I came in here after and I saw it and I was like, yeah, I think Allah and I are going to be really good. <laughs> we're, we're, we're on the same page. Um, so that, that's important, the, the feedback. So you say customer service. So right away, I'm going to assume stores fully attended. Always, okay. yes. So from open, and what's the hour, your hours here roughly? Uh, typically, here we do um, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. Uh, last wash is always an hour and a half before we close. Right. So 9.30, and then on the weekends we'll open an hour earlier, so 6 a.m., and then close an hour later, 12 midnight. Okay, so they got a good amount of time, and someone's here the whole time to work with. Yep. You. And then what, and is that at all your stores, they're all fully, atten fully yes. attended? Okay, awesome. I got so many more questions now. Uh, <laughs> this is great. So what services do you offer at all your stores? Obviously self-service. Yes, so self-service, we do um, drop-off service as okay. well. Um, we don't, we haven't really ramped up the pickup and delivery. We, mm -hmm. we were toying with it. And again, it goes back to my perfection kind of mentality where, you know, I'm, I'm obviously it's, it's, it's huge in the industry right now. And I see, I see the vans everywhere and I see people offering it. Um, but I really want to, you know, the same way that I built my laundromats, I want to make sure that when I offer it, that it's on a scale that matches mm -hmm. um, what I've done with the self-service laundromats. Right. You want to have the, yes. the same quality and exactly. experience with, with the clientele. Yes. Awesome. So what led you, jumping back to the machines again, you're doing coins here. Yes. And you're doing um, electronic payment at all four stores, just different um, vendors for electronic. What made you say you want to go with two forms of payment versus just where we see, I, I hear a lot of talk now, people just like, I just want one. I'm going all electronic yeah. payment or I'm going to just be all coin. The, 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 the biggest or really the only con that I've heard when it comes to coins kind of falls on the owner where it's like, I don't want to offer coin because I don't want to have to refill, you know, dump the coins and refill the machines on a regular basis. So basically it was, I just don't want to do more work. 
but there was a lot of pros when you look at it from the customer's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I, and I spoke to customers before, you know, when I build stores and I decide, do I want to just go all card or do I want to do a hybrid or just coin? And customers tell me, they say, look, you know, we love the flexibility. We love the fact that we have a cup of change that, you know, when we, second, we, yeah. we come home and we got, got the change in our pocket stand. and we put it in and when it's laundry day, you know, we get that cup and we come here and if it doesn't, if it's not enough to, for all of our loads, then right. we'll pay the remaining with card. But the fact that we can get rid of that change and mm -hmm. use and you know, obviously we're in, we're in very urban areas and, you know, people here are living, you know, on, you know, very low incomes and they're trying to just, you know, make it work. Right. Um, you and, know, and so cash is, is, yeah. is a dominant form of payment. Exactly. In so, the city. so there was definitely a lot of flexibility, a lot of pros, um, mm -hmm. especially for the communities that we serve. And, you know, given that flexibility, if it means w more work on my end, was something that I was willing to do. Got it. All right. So your decision was customer base. It sounds like that influenced that greatly. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm still debating. Like, <laughs> I'm like, coins, and I've lived that life for it's, so long with my so, dad. It's so funny, man. I was, I was um, when we were installing the pay range, and when, when I say we, I, when I was installing the pay range system, you know, in there, opening the top of the machines and I doing the it. Same thing. <laughs> Um, the, the, I remember very vividly this guy, I, he was next to me washing and he looked at me and he said, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, oh, we're installing a, you know, a system that you can pay. He said, are you taking away coin? And I was like, no. And he was like, I thought I was going to have to find another laundromat. He was like, I love this laundromat. He right. was like, I love the fact that you guys take coin. He was like, it's great that you're offering this, but please don't ever take away coin. And the look on his face was just enough for me to say, I'm always going to go hybrid. Damn, now you got me rethinking I'm everything. I'm telling you, it's, 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 hey, look, doing the coins, you know, right. especially on the weekends, you're coming here maybe twice a day sometimes if you're busy and that's where you want to be. Uh, oh, yeah. But, you know, the flexibility is great. And I will tell you, though, what's interesting is all of my, my other three stores started off as coin and then we introduced the credit card, the smartphone uh, payment system. Right. This store was the, the only store that when we opened, we had both at the same time. And okay. the split in my other stores is always about 30% smartphone, 70% coin. coin. Here, it's actually about 60% app, 40% coin. That's interesting. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to, you know, I guess in my other stores, people are just used to it and they still like it. Or it could also be a demographic thing. Um, but, you know... It, we see different things. So yeah. and again, here you started with both versus yeah. there. They had one and then you introduced a second. Exactly. Yeah. So that kind of that human behavior thing we talked about before, like I'm so used to seeing this, so I'm just going to keep doing it. Exactly. Versus they were here. They're like, oh, I got options yeah. from day one. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, you got me. It's a tough one. It, look, it's, it's a tough one. And I think everybody has to take <laughs> it on a case by case basis. And, um, and just decide what's best for them. Yeah, what's best for the area, what's best for the customers, and, and really go from there. Yeah. You look, if you own, there, I've heard there are people that own 20, 30, 40 stores. They're not going to do coin, right? Like, it's, it's going to be really difficult. If you want to scale that big, coin is probably not going to be for you. Right, you know? Because so. you have to, when you get to that size, you got to have different, some kind of layers of, of management. Of course. And, well, you were at 11, so let's talk about layers of management. I'm sure... You're not here every day or checking in on every single problem. And I'm speaking because I know of a story you shared I'll touch on later on. But how did you build your layers of management for 11, 6, 7, now 4 stores? So the day, you don't have to keep touching the day to day. Yeah, I, um, I, my, my personality has always made me feel that nobody could do anything better than me. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, yeah. I am the best at everything. Even I, when you suck at that's something. It. You know, I'm, nobody could do it better than me. And then I read the book by the, the author of uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or mm -hmm. uh, The Four Quadrants. And, you know, he was talking about the four quadrants and the four different kinds of people. And it really kind of like just opened my eyes where he was saying, look, there, there are people who just feel that nobody could do it better than them. And those people are very successful, but they can't scale. Um, because they, mm. they, they don't know how to delegate, they're afraid to delegate, and so what ends up happening is they usually have a very successful business that's small and that never scales. Right. If you want to scale, you have to delegate and you have to empower and you mm -hmm. have to trust. 
And when I, when I read that, I was like, okay, I have to change. I can't, if I want to scale and I want to grow, he's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this all on my own. And, you know, fast forward six, seven years later, what we have now is a system that is, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. I have a district manager. Okay. She oversees all of the locations. Right. Um, she doesn't work at anyone. She doesn't have a shift. She basically just oversees. She's like floating from She's store. floating. Right. Um, and then at every store, I have a store manager. All right. And that store manager does work a shift. Um, okay. You know, so, uh, several shifts, several days. Um, they're also required to work at least one day on the weekend because that's the busiest. Mm -hmm. um, all complaints or issues or, you know, kind of go to her. She rolls it up to the district manager. District manager rolls it up to me when needed. I also have a full-time maintenance um, person. He basically oversees all of my repairs. He oversees all of the people that clean the stores at night. Okay. He also does all of like the handiwork. So if a uh, ceiling tile needs to be changed, some shelves need to be put up. Right. Toilet paper holder got ripped off the wall. He takes care he takes of all care. that. Um, and it's great. It, it's great. And, um, and, and I always tell people, I tell my friends, I said, look, you have to think big. You cannot think small. I pay a lot of money to have a district manager, store manager. Oh, I'm doing the math in my head. Huh? It's it's right. north of, you know, $150,000 a year. Right. Um, so Easy. I pay a lot. Right. But my mentality is, could I save the $150,000, do it on my own? Yeah. But I will never be able to have four stores right. of, this, of this magnitude. And, and so, quality. And quality. Right. So I always say, look, don't be afraid to invest, not just in staff, in machines, in aesthetics, in mm -hmm. everything. Invest. Think big. It's going to be tough. My wife always tells me <laughs> she wishes she can leave me for the first two years when I open a store because I'm, so I'm strapped. In, right. you know, I've invested so much money and I'm stressed and, you know, you're, you're, you're coming out of pocket and you're barely making, you know, the paying bills, but it pays off. Right. So it's it's a long road, it's an uphill battle, but at the end, you know, it's it's really 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 great. I um, I don't know if you can see it on, in the camera, but I have a few scars here. So it's actually a very funny but not funny story. So what I used to do <laughs> now you and, got me and, looking and, at your head like <laughs> subconsciously. I'm like, now so what what I used to do my my typical day before I did this this setup was Saturday was my day. I would I would have like Wednesday I'm at this store. Thursday, I'm at that store. Da, right. da, da. Saturday, I'm at all the stores. And Saturday is going to be my maintenance because I know Sunday is, is very busy. So I want to make sure yeah, everything is in. Order. So I would pretty much wake up in the morning, be on the road 7 a.m. from store to store, spend about three hours at each store fixing machines. And this is what, four stores or at 11 stores? This was, I had uh, I had about six stores at the okay. time. Okay. All right. I can see that. That's, that's doable. <laughs> I was going to say. So, so naturally, you have to jump on top of the machines to get behind the machines. And I've done this not once, but <laughs> twice. And I'm very ashamed, but I, I have to say it just to show there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this business. Right. When I would finish doing whatever I'm doing, as I'm- I know where this is going. I, as I'm jumping off the machine, and you know how it is. Your mind is in a different, you're finished fixing one machine, my mind is already, what do I have to do now? And because yeah. I'm thinking about something, I don't realize that I jump and a fan hits my head. And, um, you know, straight to the hospital, I'm gushing blood everywhere. <laughs> and I remember the second time it happened, I called my wife and I said, I said, Amy, her name is Amy. I said, Amy, um, I did it again. And she <laughs> said, well, you did what again? And I said, I hit my head on the fan again. She said, are you kidding me? And I was like, no. And it's in the same exact place. And she was like, I don't even want to hear about it. Just go to the hospital, get stitched up. I'll see you when you get home. I'll see you when you get home. But, you know, and, and that's what I had to go through. I had, you know, in the beginning when the stores weren't doing a lot of, you know, the, you know, financially they weren't doing well. You, I get it. In the beginning, right. yes, you have to do things on your own. But always have a plan to invest. Always have a plan to grow and to think bigger and to do things on a larger scale. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so happy you shared it. Not the ceiling fan. Like that's, that's awesome. Um, and when I say awesome, I just say it from the, the perspective when we talk about blood, sweat and tears and building a business and like, you're literally, literally like, blood. like I, I've cut my hand and gashes and all kinds of stuff, but 
I've hit my head on a sailor fan, but it didn't lead to stitches. Um, but we had those cheap sailor fans. Yeah, That's these why. commercial fans, man, they spin pretty fast. Yeah. So <laughs> we had those cheap ones with the wooden blades. Yeah. So thank, thank goodness at the time. But I'm glad you share that because what I really want people to understand, and, and it's part of like why why we do this podcast, why we do Wash Weekly, um, is for people to understand what goes on in the beginning till now. A lot of people just look at what you did. They're like, wow, he's got four stores. He had 11, like the store is huge. It's 11,000 square feet, but they don't understand what it took you to get from when you opened this, well, not even when you opened the store, when you started the, the, the journey of the store, like if a store is, you told me a store has been open six months now. Yeah. But that process probably started like a year before two that. Two and a half years before. Jeez, that was <laughs> like, look, like 100% more, right? So it started two years before the store even opens. Yes. Right? So a two-year process, people, you know, it is that thing where someone's successful and they think like overnight success. And yeah, no, and, 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 and I get it. You know, our industry right now is, uh, it's on is fire. There's, a, there's a lot of attention to it and mm -hmm. it's on fire. And I've had friends set, I'm not, I'm not as active on TikTok as I should be. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm just, uh, I used to work in technology, so I don't know if I'm afraid of uh, the Chinese government knowing what I'm doing <laughs> or what, but I'm just not active on it. And uh, a friend of mine sends me a TikTok video and he says, Dude, is this real? And I was like, "What? What is I this?" Only so I click, and it's this guy, man. He's like, he's like, guys, I just bought my first laundromat, and he's emptying the quarters, and he's like, "Look how much money!" And then he's like, "But wait, it gets better." And he opens the change machine, and he grabs the stack, stack of, of bills, money. and he's like, "Look how much money I'm making!" And people are like, "Oh my god, I can!" And I'm like, "But wait a minute!" But first of all, you're taking the quarters and you're recycling it. You're putting it back in the right. machine. Right. So those don't count. So those don't count. <laughs> Secondly, what's his utility bills? What's his wages what's yeah. you know what's the cost of everything the rent this this that so but you know we live in a world where trends set the pace right and because of that there's a lot of attention and unfortunately there's this phase where people are calling it passive income right and i and i like and i just it's not it's yeah. not i you know you, you you sent me a few questions um to kind of you know kind of get, get an idea and one of the questions was like, how much time do you dedicate? Mm -hmm. And my answer to you is too much. <laughs> it doesn't stop. Right. These businesses, um, look, they're without a doubt. Look, the, you know, I, I've owned a restaurant and I know the food business is very different and you have to dedicate a lot more time here. Right. Things kind of if you had a good setup and you have a good system, you're definitely not going to dedicate as much time as you would in, let's say, a restaurant. But right, it's there, a simpler business. Yes, there is still a lot of time, and machines break, and you know things, other things break, yeah. and cleanliness. You're a laundromat. If you're not clean, you're not doing the right thing, and so you have staff, you have moving parts. Um, so there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work. If you're getting into it thinking like. I'm just going to take my money, invest it, and just watch the money grow. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. So, you know, that ruins the, the second part of our podcast because it, it, it's called Show the Money, and I want you to pull all the money out the coin machine. We'll, we'll, we'll empty the coins right now. <laughs> that just ruined that, so I'm going to scratch that off the list. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, you, you talked about earlier that you're, thinking, you're looking at getting in a pickup and delivery, but you want to check all your, your boxes first on your checklist to make sure – you deliver a quality experience and product. In, in your experience, in all the years you've been in, in 11 stores, wh where do you see the industry going? Like, what, what has you like, I'm a little concerned? And then has you like, hmm, I can't wait to get into yeah. th that. No, definitely. Um, so the concern is, and we were just talking about this, mm -hmm. is the cost. Right, the cost of everything, the yeah. cost of the rising cost of utilities, the rising cost of construction, the rising cost of machines. And the reason why it's a, it's, it's a huge concern is because it's not, the ratio is off. We can't, if machines are triple what they cost me, literally, I mm. built my store in 2019 and it cost me about a third of what it cost me to build this store. So. But at the same time, I can't raise my prices twofold, threefold, right? Exactly. I'm doing a quarter at a time. I'm doing maybe 50 cents at a time. So 
it doesn't match. It's not matching. You know, we're seeing utility costs, especially in Jersey. They're doing all these clean energy things, which are great for the environment. And I, and I, you know, I love it and I, you know, promote it. But we just can't keep up with the rising costs. So that's a huge that concern is. for me. And I'm hoping that, you know, you know, the good folks with the CLA and, you know, the, that have influenced, you know, uh, you know, they, they, they were the ones that made us essential in the pandemic. Yeah. So I, I think that through their hard work and efforts, I, I'm hoping that we can do something to kind of help us to regulate some of that rising cost. So that's a major concern. What I'm super excited about is, you know, we are now, we've always had very limited market share. Okay. When we search for a laundromat location, it was always like, all right, I got to be somewhere where it's apartments, where they can't have washer and dryers. Mm -hmm. And that's the only place I can be. But with pickup and delivery, we're now able to expand that market share. We can go to the single family home area, to the suburbs and, you know, to places where people still do laundry at home, but maybe just want a week off from laundry. Right. So the, the ability to expand our market share is phenomenal. It is. Um, you know, and, 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 and the technology, the technology that's now being introduced in, in, in the machines is, you know, helps us really understand the business on a much more detailed level. It helps us streamline things. It does. Um, I think it's too soon to understand where AI is going to play a part. Um, I think it's too soon, yeah. not just for our industry in general. Um, so, it's, you know, yeah, it's wide open. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but there's definitely a lot of great things happening in the industry. And whenever an industry gets the attention that it gets, it's great because then what happens is the fu the vendors follow suit, right? The people that want to make money selling products to the industry exactly. start to ramp up. And I saw it firsthand in the Atlanta excellence show. I was blown away. I couldn't believe the amount of people, the amount of vendors, the amount of yeah. products. That, that was my first clean show. And I, I was just like, wow. I was like a kid in a toy store. I was like, <laughs> I want this, 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 and that. And then when I came back home and realized my pockets were empty, I was, I was like, like, okay, maybe I'll, let me slow it down. Maybe and I don't need all those. Yeah, things. yeah. But no, but it's great to have yeah. those options. So the industry is definitely in, in a very good place. Yeah, that's awesome. So a lot of shiny toys out there yes. that we could easily put into to our stores and the technology is coming. You, you, we talked about earlier, you do quarters and electronic payment. Yes. So I'm going to, obviously your, the prices in both parallel each other. Yes, we Have, do add the, we add the fee, the, the credit card transaction fee on the- Electronic yes. side. Do, do you find it a hindrance that if you go to increase the price, being that you only have quarters, you can only go up in 25 cent increments versus if you were all electronic, you can be like, I can go a nickel, a dime, or six cent yes, or whatever. Yes, it's not only, that's not the only, that is a huge hindrance. And then mm -hmm. the other thing is too, is I do run specials. So I'll do, you know, happy hour on Tuesday and Wednesday, oh, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So now I have to line up both systems, right? So it is, and, and here the good thing is like, we have, if you have a store like this where laundry pay is actually tied in with the machines. So I, here in this store, I only have to do it on one system and it also modifies the prices for right. both coin and, and, uh, and this is, I've been, <coughs> I was actually one of the first adopters with pay range and I love the company. Right. And I was one of the first adopters in Jersey. And I, I remember I, I built, I did it in COVID and they had a, they had a deal where it was like, <laughs> buy the pr buy the product with you know the bluetooth device for twenty dollars but because it's covid and they were, you know everybody was kind of like just trying to sell things right they were like we'll give you a rebate for twenty dollars so technically i got them free. free for all my th and i was like give me all <laughs> i was my my plan was to do it in my newest store in linden new jersey mm -hmm. but then when they were like well there's a promotion free i was like all three stores i'll do it all at once all three stores <laughs> i did every single th store at the same time and um but I've been so I've you know very very much in contact with them and I keep telling them guys you have to make it easier for me to be able to adjust the prices during different days exactly. of the week. What I have to do now is I literally have to like log in on Monday night, change the price, then log in again on Wednesday night, <laughs> change the prices back. And so hopefully, you know, um, they'll be able to kind of align that up a little bit better. But yes, it is it is more complicated, mm -hmm. but again, just more work on me but more flexibility for the customers. Got it. So with the you got the district manager, you have the store, store manager, manager, then you have dedicated maintenance, and you said he oversees the cleaning of the store. So your attendants don't clean, no. clean the store. 
So is that, do you hire an outside company to come do the cleaning? For, we are, no, they're, they're, they're part team of, members. They're, they're part of the team members, okay. um, but they just, they don't do anything but, but clean. clean. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Everybody has a, a focus and, spe Correct. and specialize on it. So four stores, or at least how many team members all in? 28. <laughs> so our store at our peak, we were like, at the soapbox, we were like 12, maybe 13 between the cell service, the drop store, and then all of our drivers. So what do you do to keep, you said 28, right? Yes. I got to get better with my memory. What, what, do you, what do you do to keep all 28 people spread out between four stores on the same page, you know, focused and moving the mission of Bubbles R Us forward? Communication, communication, communication. <laughs> I can't say it enough. Right. You know, we have, we'll have um, quarterly meetings okay. um, with everyone where we basically go over things that pertain to the business in general, things that pertain to each particular store. I'll have monthly meetings with my district manager and my store managers and my maintenance person. Um, so, you know, I always, I'm, I'm always talking to them. Mm -hmm. We have WhatsApp group chats okay. with everybody. I was, I was so ask, each, like, store, how are you? each store has its own WhatsApp group chat with all the employees. The district manager is always in it. The maintenance person is always in it. And then you have the store manager and the employees of that store in it. Right. And myself, obviously, and my partner. And this way, if we need to communicate something, we do it there. Everybody's on board. If there's an issue at the store, they can quickly reach us there. Mm -hmm. So having, you know, a very open form of communication is key. Um, but also, you know, it's, 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 um, it's the same thing, right? I think, and, and I say this a lot, we, we tend to forget that as we serve the communities that we're in and we do things for the communities, we tend to forget that the employees are part of the community. Yeah. And so we do things for them. They're you know, our customers. Yeah. I'll come in here, you know, it'll be, you know, a busy day on a Sunday and I know what's happening. Mm -hmm. They're not eating lunch. They're not eating because they're running around. So I'll come in with a few pies of pizza, you right. know, or some coffee and, you know, taking care of them, showing them that I do care and value what they do and that they are, a critical and integral part of what makes Bubbles R Us. I, I tell them all the time, if it's not for them, there is no Bubbles R Us laundromat, right? Because right? you can't open and I, run off. I can't locations. do it all on myself. As mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't take the credit, and and as, and I have to make sure that they know that. Um, a big thing that we've been doing lately, um, you know, which is they they love it. Um, you know, uh, holiday party. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we we did it here in Patterson this year. We had because uh, you got eleven thousand square feet. <laughs> well, no, we actually in Patterson, the city. Not we. Okay. I did it in the store last year, and okay. what I noticed when I did it in the store last year is they were still helping us set up, and I said, no, I want them to really just walk into a place, I'm, sit down, mm -hmm. be dressed like they're going out, and just enjoy themselves. So we rented a place um, in Patterson, New Jersey. Awesome. They came in. We danced. We ate. We had the giveaways. We had you know secret Santas, and they. We, did, we do a raffle every year, and this is another thing. Christmas is a great time. Mm -hmm. I love it, you know, I love it. It's a great time at my house, it's a great time in my businesses, and the people here love it. Some of them are here alone, they don't have family to celebrate it with, so we wanna give them a place to, to feel like they have a family to celebrate it. So we do um, a competition every year, which is who does the best Christmas decoration. Okay. So every store, I give them a budget, I give them some money, and I say, all right, go at it. And then we, uh, we post the pictures online and we get some people to vote. Oh, and then we awesome. choose and the person, the, the store that wins, all of the employees of that store gets a, a, a prize, a gift for that. Like so that. things like that, things like that. You, you gotta make them feel like they're appreciated. Mm -hmm. You gotta make them feel like they're part of something bigger. Um, you know, a lot of times, we, I've worked in corporate, and I've always appreciated, you know, some of the perks that corporate gave, which was, you know, you can have classes or you can do this. Yep. I, you know, I offer some of them English classes. Um, some of them are, you know, you know, they yeah. don't speak English. English well. not their yeah, first language. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So just give them something more than just their pay. Right. It's not just their pay. You got to mm -hmm. make them feel like they're, they're, they're appreciated. Yeah. So I can, and you have all 28 people come together and I'm sure there's, some team members who never work at other stores. Yeah. So when they come together and they see all these other people on, in part of the Bubbles R Us team, I'm sure their head just like goes, 
wow, this is not just me or the three other people I work with in yes. in this store in whatever area. Do you, do you think that's an advantage for you for when it comes to being a multi-store owner, when it comes to team retention, for them to see that and say, maybe there's a, a future beyond me just folding. I could be a store manager. I could be a, not even a store manager, because they see that. I could be a district manager, or maybe if he opens five more stores, I could be X. And you, you hit it right on the head. I mean, that's that's exactly why we do things like that where, mm -hmm. you know, instead of doing separate holiday parties at one store each, you want to make them feel like they're part of something bigger than just a laundromat, right? That they're part of an organization mm -hmm. and there is room for improvement. And a lot, all of my store managers, by the way, were employees, regular. You promote from- I promote. Right. I did not hire from, from outside because I want to show them that, look, I know it gets repetitive, you're washing and folding and you're dealing with the same customers and it gets routine and yep. some, you know, we're, as humans, we want to see change, right? We like change. And, um, and so this gives them the idea or gives them the, the ability to understand that there is a possibility for change. And you mm -hmm. know what? Some of them also tell me, if I move to Patterson and I'm now in Elizabeth, can I work at the Patterson store? Yeah, of right. course. You know? So it even if you options. need to move, there's, there's options. And that's yeah. the thing, it really does blow their mind to understand that, wow, I, this is this is a big deal. This yeah. is a big organization that I work for. It's not some dude with just one local exactly. laundromat. And that yeah. motivates them, definitely. That's awesome. That's good to hear. So I heard you mention your partner. You have a partnership when you were speaking a few minutes ago. And then you mentioned in the beginning how your dad was like, yes. hey, come sign this paperwork. Let's, <laughs> let's do this laundry thing. How have you seen partnerships, you know, benefit you throughout your laundromat career. Yeah, I know. I mean, like I said, there's, there's, um, you know, even though they're simpler businesses, there's still a lot of moving parts. Right. And, you know, my dad is, he's one of the most charming people I've ever met in my life. I, I, I would literally go into a store and if he went to like Egypt for a month, I would have customers come up to me and say, where's your dad? I haven't seen your dad in a month. We miss him. You know, that's just the way he is. He comes in, you know, he has a smile on his face. He's always so nice. He always has some candy in his pockets that he's given <laughs> to the little kids or something, or he'll, he'll go to the store and buy a little kid something and right, come and, bring it. you know, so my dad really was the face of the brand, got it. you know, the, the, and, and, and then as he got older and he told me, he said, look, I, I don't want to do any more stores. I'm happy with what we have together. If you want to do more, um, that's that's fine. But I really just I can't do it anymore. And um, my partner, who was a partner in this store, um, I've known him for 30 years. Wow. We met in seventh grade, and um, and we just yeah <laughs> and we we we've, we've known each other since then. We've had other businesses together. Mm -hmm. He's he's really he's he's a brother to me. I, I don't have any brothers, and he is truly a brother to me. I've. I remember growing up, my parents used to work two jobs and I used to always after school take the bus to his house and his mom used to always cook for me and I used That's to stay awesome. at his house. And so, you know, um, it, it's, it's been great because he knows what he does on his end. I do what I do mm -hmm. and it just makes things very streamlined. Right. Doing that. And it helps. It really does help. Yeah. So I don't know if you can relate to it, but I can take a page out of your book where when you talked about installing the pay ranges and when we put an electronic system in one of our stores, like I was there with the installer and I was like, he couldn't figure something out. I was like, give me this thing, let yeah. me show you how. <laughs> so I can understand being hands-on and, and wanting to tweak these things and get them a certain way. Do you think you would have had the success you had, like, you know, four stores now, 11 stores, if you didn't have a partner in the business with you at one point in time? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Um, I think having a, so, and I'll tell you why. W one of the biggest benefits, um, and this is what I, my, my partner's name is Hussam, by the way, and, and I, he might be here, by the way. He might be here. <laughs> we, we may be able to, 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 to see him. If he's here, we got it. We got it on camera at least <laughs> once. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of ups, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. These laundromats are not cheap to build, as right. I'm sure you know, and a lot of people and watching this. And they're not getting any and cheaper. And they're not getting any cheaper. And so there is a, there's a huge stress factor when you're first opening up, especially if it's a new location that wasn't a pre-existing store that you took over. 
there's a lot of stress and there are times where I'm sitting home like, why did I do this? Right. And then I call my partner or I meet him at the store and he's always been the voice of reason to me. He's always been like, don't worry. It's all right. We'll get through it. We've gotten through all the other stores. Like it's going to be fine. Right. And just having that person to lean on is priceless. Yeah. You know, he, he's he, the calm one. He's the, he's definitely the calm one. <laughs> I'm the one that's like, no, we got to do this. We got to do that. And he's just like, just it's let right. things take its natural course. Right. We're doing the most we can. Let's just be patient. We'll wait. Let's make a decision later. He obviously adds a tremendous amount of value outside of that, but that's really, you know, I, I would not be where I am if it wasn't for him. I'd probably be like dead somewhere from yeah. the stress level or something. So, yeah. You know, I, I asked that because um, I probably, I don't know how long, but I, I had this mentality where it's like, I'm going to grow it organically. I can do it all myself. And then one day I sat back and I don't know, I was reading something and they started, they were listing like the, the richest people in, in the world. And obviously Bezos was on the list. Yeah. And I can't remember when it was and what position he was, but they listed how much he owned of Amazon. And I want to say it was like maybe 14 or 16%. Wow. And I was just like, wait, time out. I this, never knew that. Wow. That's this guy, crazy. and like, it's probably a different number now, but I mean, I expected it to be like, we always think in business, like I, I got to have at least 51%. Like I got to be majority. I was like, and he's probably majority, but it made me look at it. He could be majority with right. 14, 16, because everything else is so right. fragmented. Right. Somebody's got five here, okay. three, whatever. But I was like, wait a minute, this guy has 14 or 16, whatever it is, and he's the richest person in the world. So how many partners does he have in this business that he only has, we'll say 14%? Yeah. It gave me a whole different look at it to say, probably 14% of 100 million is better than, as it goes to what you said earlier about when you said your mentor said about building and scaling, it's probably better than 100% of me having 200,000. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. And, 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 and look, you know, we all, we all know the term, right? Two minds are better than one, you know? So it's, it, it, what I will say is at the same token is partnerships can be difficult. And if- Been there. Trust. <laughs> is mm -hmm. key and outlining things from the beginning. Hey, you're going to do this. I'm going to do this because the, where I see partnerships collapse is why am I here fixing these machines while he's home doing nothing? You know, look, we decided I'm, I'm responsible for maintenance. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for finance. That's it. Right now, if he slacks and we're having issues with finance, yeah, I'll question him. If I, he comes in and something is wrong with me, but you have to have good legal documentation in place as mm -hmm. well, because sometimes things happen, family members get involved. You got to make sure that that is ironclad. You have an attorney look at it, your shareholder agreement, your operating agreement, and developing clear lines, who does what, who's responsible for what, paying, how do we get paid, how do we split profits, all of that stuff. Make sure that is all ironed out before you both invest a single penny. And if that is good, mm -hmm. then you guys can respect that, you're going to have a great journey. Yeah. Because the human mind is funny. And when you said you're fixing machines and you're like, oh, this guy's home probably like <laughs> sipping a martini or something. I'm here slaving and busting my head on the ceiling fans. <laughs> we tend to think to the worst right away. And then you end up saying something that part and they're feeling guilty. Like, I feel like I should be doing more. Right. Like, even though they agreed to do finances, they're just like, hey, I, I really want to help fix the machines, but I, I don't know how to, you right. know, I don't know how to use a screwdriver. So it, and that's exactly my partner. He, he couldn't use He couldn't use a screwdriver if his life depended on it. He, and he'll tell you, he'll admit right. it. He'll he's admit like, it. I don't even own a screwdriver. <laughs> I've got too many of them. <laughs> I can never find them when I need them. That's awesome. So before I, I thought of that, I was going to say there are operators who are just getting into this and things are expensive. And sometimes finances are limited. A lot of store owners don't get into this business and have a blank check, uh, yep. unlimited bank account. Um, otherwise, we would buy everything at Clean Show. They, there are things they want to do that would make an impact on their business to help them when they first start. What would you say is, I don't know, one or two or whatever things that you, you think of throughout your experience that you've done from beginning to where you are now, opening a store, managing a store, what would be something that 
they should do or some things they should do in the beginning to make a big impact on that business when they first open it to get customers in, to keep customers coming back, yeah. um, to make their store different, to stand out in their, in their neighborhood. Yeah. My, you know, I, I want to start by saying that um, I'm a very skeptical person. It, it takes a lot to convince me. Mm -hmm. my, my wife says I'm a hater, but I'm like, there's, there's a very <laughs> fine line between being a hater and being a skeptic. And I'm a skeptic because- My wife tells me that too. You know, she's, she's, no, my wife, she always, she's like, why are you such a hater? I'm like, listen, I'm not, I need to be convinced. I'm right. not just gonna see a video on social media and run and buy the next new gadget. Like, exactly. I need to know that it's actually gonna benefit me. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I say, always look at the ROI, right? right? Always look at your return on investment. When I first started in this business, there were people trying to sell me these um, water recycling things. Mm. And at the time, they took like 2,000 square feet of space. They were like $500,000. And I was like, but am I ever going to really make my money back on that? Like right. if I invest that much. That's a big number. You know, so it, when, when you're opening up a store, there are going to be a lot of people trying to sell you stuff. Naturally, because they are salesmen right. and, or saleswomen, and that's what they do. They, they make their money by selling, right? So a lot of times they're going to overpromise. And they're going to tell you that if you put this gadget or this thing in your store, you're going to see X amount. Sometimes that's not reality. So what I would say is stick to the fundamentals. Okay. Your machines are the number one thing in your laundromat. The number one thing. Make sure you study the machines, make sure you understand what your area needs. Like I said, here I chose Electrolux because everybody had a different brand, mm -hmm. uh, the same brand, I want it to be different. So that's a, an easy way to be unique just by simply choosing a different brand. You have to put machines anyway, right? So right. it's not an added cost, but just by simply changing the brand or using a different brand, you've automatically put yourself on a much more higher level because you're unique. Do things that are simple that don't cost a lot, like what? Plants, having a nice clean bathroom, yep. you know, having nice aesthetics, art on the wall, things like that. Things that don't cost much, so the ROI is much better. Right. Awesome. Allah, listen, <laughs> man, it's always a pleasure. It really is. And like you said, well, I'm sure we can be here <laughs> hours. <laughs> hours. It's, it's always so great to talk to you as well, Wally, it really. Is. I appreciate you allowing us to come in your store and spend some time with you. My man, I look forward to more conversation. Thank you, Ali. Same here. Thanks so much. <laughs>